Hi, I'm Symphoneers, and today we're taking a look at another Blue White Artifacts deck. Uh, this was very much inspired by just like, what if we build around some of the strongest artifacts in Standard in Patchwork Automaton, Cryptic Coat, uh, Thousand Moonsmithy, and this is the, the shell that ar arose from it that I used to hit Diamond with this season. Um, so something I didn't realize when I started building the deck is that Cryptic Coat is actually a really, really good support piece for Automaton and Thousand Moonsmithy. Uh, so for Automaton, the interaction is simple, and just uh, recasting Cryptic Coats puts more counters on Automaton. Thumbs up, it it works nicely. Um, with a Thousand Moonsmithy, it works on a few different axes. Uh, for one, you do have the same recast thing in that casting Cryptic Coat off of Barracks of the Thousand, the, the flip side, the back side. That is pretty cool and good. It's a way to reliably produce the extremely good gnome tokens late game especially if you're flooding or whatever, just print out more coat token things, um, more more cloak things, print out more gnomes, uh, and kill people. And that's great. But also, Cryptic Code itself produces two things for the purposes of uh, Thousand Moon Smithy. It, the artifact itself, the coat, and the uh, body, the card that is cloaked by the coat. Uh, and that is relevant because the gnomes themselves care about your creature count and your artifact count. And the smithy, for flipping into the barracks, uh, can also tap either creatures or artifacts. So the coat double dipping in that way actually really helps the smithy uh, flip effectively and be this big kind of mid to late game threat that ends games. Built around that, we have a handful of stuff. We have a little bit of acceleration in, namely Iron Craig. Um, we have a handful of removal in spring-loaded saw blades and glass casket just for handling early threats, and we have a lot of lifelink. Uh, Mandible Justicar and Steel Seraph are both a huge part of our ability to stabilize or um, kind of outvalue aggro decks, uh, like removing early threats and then lifelinking the damage we do take is a big part of how we don't die early. Uh, and then we also have a couple of eggs in the deck, uh, Surgical Skull Bomb and Raska Puzzle Door Eggs, just being a term for one-mana artifacts that can, uh, sack themselves and draw a card. Uh, yeah, these help with all of the artifact stuff we're doing, as well as just card consistency, uh, like making sure we draw smithies and, um, peel through our deck and stuff. We are running some Might Stones and Weak Stones, too. This is another form of removal. The removal we do have can just struggle to kill things like a Shieldred that's not attacking, or whatever. So having something that is just a clean, like, minus five, minus five, no, kill that thing, is helpful. Um, we are not playing the Urza, because I don't feel that building around the meme of the Meld here is worth it, but, you know, you do you. You can cram that Urza in here if you want. Uh, and yeah, that's that's kind of the main list taken care of. The mana is unusual in that we are playing Scene of the Crime because it's an artifact land. And playing an artifact land in this deck is helpful for triggering Mandible Justicar as well as uh, upping our count for a Thousand Moon Smithy stuff. You can also tap Scene of the Crime to do the Thousand Moon Smithy thing, which is relevant. I'm not 100% confident that Four of is correct for Scene of the Crime, but... Uh, I would say at least two or three of these can actually be quite important or quite helpful, so. Um, yeah, that's... anyway. That's more or less the deck. If you like the deck tech and like the video, like, subscribe, etc. Helps the channel a lot. Let's get on to some actual gameplay. This hand is very reasonable. Just early growth threat in Patrick Automaton. Justicar also good, um... Good early card, we're versus... Uh, Soul Tie. Hmm... Interesting. Etrada! Wow. Uh, one for Death Touch is awkward. Uh, let's do the Justicar and the Skull Bomb here. I think there's an argument for doing Cryptic Coat, but um, getting the kind of artifact prowess threat down early is just nice. Oh lordy, they cloaking! Okay, other Mandible Justicar is something. Um, 
We can also take the opportunity here to bounce a Trotta with a Skull Bomb if we want, or we can just play our Coat and Jam. Uh, we don't actually have the Double White for the Steel Seraph, which is awkward. I think that's maybe a point in favor of bouncing a Trotta back to hand, is... Um, just drawing... Drawing a card to get land this game so far. Feeling a little iffy. Uh, they trade the Coat for the Automaton, which... fair. That is maybe a little bit aggressive, like there's an argument that I should hold back the Automaton more. In general, with the way that this deck scales, I don't think you need to be too... too touchy about, like, absolute max valuing your Automatons. Um... Yeah... It, just trading them effectively, or, like, getting good use out of them... Uh... can just look like... Trading for trading up, trading for kind of a three mana thing. Vanifar, so yeah, they're very cloak, j just cloak things dot deck. Mm. If we could, I was gonna say if we could draw a white source, that would be very helpful. Um. Hmm. So we can get a just a card down. I don't know if that's actually... Uh, maybe that's just good enough. Nah, something about that's unsatisfying to me. Um, B Vanifar, back to hand for tempo things. Raska Puzzle Door is another trigger for Mandible Justicar, which is something. Uh, getting the three toughness here is cool and good, because means they can't trade off one of the cloaked cards um, unless they block with both of them. And two for one for our Justicar is fine. Bloomkin flips up. Hmm. If you can dodge the disguise cost on Bloomkin, that's actually kind of nice. Uh oh. I don't know how concerned I am about this, because we do have them to seven. And the cloak is unblockable. Like, we can give the mandible just a car flying? It's tempting to do a smithy here, but... Uh, hold on. Crack the Araska puzzle door, because we do have... Uh, let's get a white source, so we don't have to do awkward... Or, like, live with awkward scene of the crime mana. Um, and then I would like to steal Seraph. Uh, that's a good thing to cover. The auto tapper will preferentially do the scene of the crime thing over tapping pain lands, which is deeply annoying. It has definitely lost me games before, so you know, take care. Um,. And then we can, sorry, yeah, tap the Steel Seraph here to do the scene of the crime thing. That gets up to that. Sorry, do we just have lethal here? I don't think I realized that when I was thinking through this line. Uh, potentially, I guess. So flying gets us evading the things there. They might just have interaction for stuff, or it looks like they have interaction for stuff, so... Herd Migration. Okay, so they gain three, and that'll keep them alive for now. But they are at three, and we lifelink back up to 30. So that's nice. Um, our opponent also bounces the cloak back to hand. Bloomkin's a 7-7. Seven, seven. That is one nice thing about the Surveil duels, even though they're not, like, great duels overall. The basic typing can really matter for some cards, anyway. Uh, opponent replays Vanifar. Uh, they cloak another thing from hand. Bloomkin does a smash. So does Atrata. I don't think we block any of this, or, like, we could, but, um, seems unnecessary. Ooh, 
Our opponent does a smash. And okay. Um, we can do various things here. I think the thing I mostly want to do is just play out the other Steel Seraph. Um, if we're very fiddly with tapping, or no, that doesn't quite work. Our mana is surprisingly awkward this game. Um, anyway. Yeah, the way those animate is always weird to me. Uh, flying. Flying. Attack all. I assume our opponent can do something here. Titania's command. Bear. Excel target player's graveyard gain five. Okay. Neat trick. Did not save them. That's the most I've seen someone lean into a cloak deck, so that was cool. But yeah, we do get there in the end. Good games to the opponent. This hand is... Okay, the two lands are concerning, but we do have a Skull Bomb to help rip through our deck or, like, draw cards. Um... Yeah, would love an untapped land on two, no dice, so we will play out the deserted beach and the skull bomb and hope that we don't automatically lose this to mana screw. Now we get, yeah, we get up to at least three, so that's something. Um, I think I'd like to do the coat here, just because the coat is something that we're pretty comfortable throwing under, um the Visitor or the Kami of Transients or whatever, like, it's a decent blocker as a 3-2. Uh, the Steel Seraph performs similarly, but we also prefer to keep the Steel Seraph around later in the game. Or, like, there's more cost to using it. They burn an Ossification and two additional mana on the face down card, which is nice. Um, or, like, if that's going to get got, Pretty good to have them sink so many resources into it. Um, I don't love doing this play, but I think it makes sense to do the Skull Bomb Bounce Mode. Because, yeah, we hit land drops by doing that. We hit land drops, we help pre uh, prevent ourselves from taking more damage. Weird to do the Jukai Naturalist before the Kami of Transients. Okay, I guess they're just going to try to absolutely murder us with, with the Visitor. Yeah, it seems strange to me, but anyway. Um, we can spit out a Thousand of Moons Smithy token, which is thoroughly fun, but might leave us open to getting murdered. Um, the Steel Seraph is not ideal here. Uh, this one's kind of messy and weird. Um, play out the puzzle door pass. We're delaying the smithies a bit by doing this, but I think the hope is that, um, we'll have our artifact count and stuff up enough that it will, uh, the flip will be a little bit easier. We're already at eight, which is not great. Mm -hmm. Audacity draws them a card. Uh, to the Araska Puzzle Door, search for removal, I guess, or neither of these will be untapped. Uh, sea Chrome Coast, just because, I know, we already have two Scene of the Crimes. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we're very probably just dead here. We might be okay. Like, a 6-6 six, six is a good blocker, but if they have any way to interact with this, yeah, we're just dead on board. So we have slow mana versus an aggressive deck and get punished for it, which is unsurprising. This hand is pretty good. 
All is like multiple automatons. Uh, them being removal resilient and goozling. Um, go for the throat. It's nice. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, do Otawara. Or versus Domain, which is rough. Um, they're just fairly likely to have sweepers and things. I guess depending on the build of Domain, we might be okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Do the other automaton and the Razka puzzle door. Uh, this stuff happens. We go vroom vroom with the automaton. Play out the mandible Justicarp probably next turn. They're scaling to an attra attracts, isn't it? Like it's not domain or it's not um it's not the lifelinky angel version of domain, it's Everyone's favorite card. Whee! Is this just fine? This might just be fine. Oh, sorry, it's only as a sorcery. Never mind. Uh, this happens. Play out land. Um. Doing a think. Doing a think. Thousand Moon Smithy. This might be incorrect. I just like having a 6-6 six, six down. Um, I'd really like to just draw a land next turn for killing the Shieldred. That would be nice. We do have the option of, like, bouncing it. Uh, but... Well, no land. Okay. Um... Yeah, I'll do this aggressively, I think. This reduces our ability to push damage this turn. But it is pretty nice for setting up our late game, or like flipping the barracks is important for contesting the opponent. Any go big opponent. Um, so, yeah, just getting that done, flipping the barracks, getting stuff happening, getting a, like, half-decent attack here for six. Uh, all that seems okay. And then when they replay the shield druid, we can might stone weak stone it, which is something they are probably at a Traxamana next turn. Mm -hmm. Herd migration happens, which is fine. Um, yeah, I'm not honestly that fussed about herd migration. Uh, why don't we do... Uh, do I want to actually do my stone weak stone here? Um, let's crack the Araska puzzle door. Take a look in a book, reading Rainbow, etc., etc. Igonjo is not immediately useful to us, so I would like to uh, cryptic coat to get some triggers happening. This stuff happens. Uh, gnome tokens are eight eights. More counters on the automatons. Um, automatons go burr. Gnomes get bigger. Mandible Justicar fires our entire team. Real swole. Um, so yeah, we're kind of fine with the herd migration, or like it's not actually a great defense again. I mean, it can stall us, and if they have a sweeper, we're kind of sad, but then we can do the cryptic coat rebuilding thing. So yeah, uh, they do take out the mandible Justicar. We lifelink back up to 22, though. Hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sh sure? Sh shrug? Um, deserted beach. 
once again look at stuff for... They just throw in the towel because they can't keep up? So that's fun. Yeah, that's a pretty good example of how, like, oppressive or how punchy our late game can be. Uh, big moves like actually paying for herd migration don't really matter to us. At least if we do the barracks thing and etc. So, you know, that, that, that was neat. Good games to the opponent. A little bit thin, but we do have Automaton and Skull Bomb to help us draw into stuff, and if we don't immediately draw into White Mana, we at least have Cryptic Coat, so that's something. Scene can eventually fix for White Mana, although the way Scene fixes for mana is clunky, or I actually find that that is, like, having to tap a creature for it is the bigger downside um, than it entering tapped. Uh, let's do scene here first, because that delays the Skull Bomb until after the Patchwork Automaton, which we're pretty okay with. Opponent plays out a, a thing, and hey, white mana, woo! Um, anyway, still just play out Odora, play out the Automaton. Uh, probably do Justicar Spell Bomb, or sorry, Skull Bomb next turn. Opponent straight vibing. Uh, we do draw an automaton, so let's get those down first. You preferentially want to sequence like automatons and then justicars and then cryptic coats and then other stuff. Even though like uh, smithies and things are powerful, they need setup. Sure. They do virtue of loyalty on our turn. Uh, we get our got our automaton big enough that they don't have a productive block, which is good. Bunnycorn, so yeah, Boris tokens or whatever. Um, I know I just talked through all that sequencing, but the smithy here might actually be decent just because the token's going to be a... Sorry, is it 5-5 five, five or a 6-6, six? Six, six, I think? Uh, it is going to be thick. Um, we do have other options. Uh, brain. Yeah, I don't know. Violence. Oh, right, we do have to... Sorry, the, the fucked up way the auto-tapper does pain lands. Very annoying. Uh, do this. Do a honk honk. Um, they can trade for an automaton here, but the productive blocks for them involve them losing the Bunnicorn, which is a big power point of their deck, presumably, or, like, it, it can potentially be a big threat. Okay. So they two-for-one for the larger automaton. Yeah, I'm, I'm very okay with that. Getting multiple bodies off of the field versus a Virtue of Loyalty deck is pretty cool and good. Uh, they ossify the Thousand Moon Smithy token, which, not ideal, but fine. Like, we will live. Um, let's crack the Skull Bomb here, maybe. Hmm, another Smithy. Uh, don't be afraid to legend rule the Smithy. The Gnome token is really good. I've been delaying the Justicar enough, I think I should just get it down here. Um... Opponents to 10. Yeah, especially versus a more aggressive deck. Just ensuring that we can do a little lifelinky stuff is pretty cool and good. Uh, Urbrask's Forge is really slow versus our deck. Um, yeah, we could do a coat or something. I think just Legend Ruling the Smithy is going to be... Again. Um, is going to be a bit better for us. Do do do. The Just Car, of course, gets two procs, one off the Smithy entering, one off the Gnome token entering. Um. And they explode. <laughs> yeah, we're just able to apply a lot of pressure very quickly. Good games to the opponent. Thank you for watching the video, and an extra big thank you to the Patreon patrons and YouTube members that help make these videos possible. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye.